so that there's not so much background noise. And of course, you can take yourself off mute to chat. Um, but we thought it would be a little cleaner. So um, I just thought if do folks can folks find the chat? I've been some people have been introducing themselves. Anybody need any help kind of navigating that first time or? No, nope. no, nope, okay. we're good. Okay. And there's also like a hand raise. And um, so there's a couple of features there. So um, Okay, well, having having said that, I'll, I'm gonna turn it over to Caitlin. I'm just gonna say thanks for taking some time out. It's nice to see some faces and uh, cheers to all of us for um, coming together. Well, sale. Well, cheers. Happy, cheers. happy virtual happy hour. Um, and yeah, as, as Joe said, it looks like we have a few more people coming in and joining. I just got texts from a few people being like, I'm on my way. So we'll have people jumping in as we go, but um, you know, the Pum Boot Society has been around for a while, and when this all happened a couple of weeks ago, we got together and we were like, what do we do? How do we help? And then how do we start to provide resources? So we've kind of come up with on Instagram and just trying to find tips and tricks to help us all kind of navigate through this interesting time. Um, we also just wanted a place where everybody can get together and see each other and smiling faces and have a drink because at the end of the day, that's sometimes what we need after these crazy days that honestly, sometimes for me, I don't know about the rest of you, seem more hectic than my normal days when we could get out of the house and when we could do things, which is pretty amazing. So um, we want to thank you all for being here. I'm so pleased to see so many folks from the UK tuned in. That is absolutely fantastic. It's 11 p.m. where you are. So thank you. Um, what we're going to do today is we are going to, sorry, my dog can't decide what she wants to do. Um, today what we're going to do is we're going to first start off with some time with Suzanne and Evan from the Crafty Cask. Um, They're going to teach us a little bit about hosting a virtual tasting for your brand. Um, they're also going to talk about some of the virtual tastings that they're doing and how you can kind of get involved with that. Um, from there, we're going to open it back up to everyone, and we'd love to take this time for everyone to kind of share ideas, share what's working, share what's not, share some learnings that you've, you've had over the past couple of weeks, and just kind of have a casual time. Um, as Jenna said, there's the chat in the corner over here. On your right-hand side, it should be. Um, as Suzanne and Evan are chatting, if you have questions, feel free to type it on in there, um, and we'll follow back up at the end and kind of go through those. With that, I think we're ready to get started. Everybody good? Everyone have a drink? <laughs> yeah? <Yep>. Okay, <laughs> I hope so. Um, we're gonna turn it over to Suzanne and Evan and you guys take the floor. I will go ahead and see if I can, Jenna, do you wanna pin them to the major, major board real quick? Cool. Um, hi everyone. Hey. I think um, I know a few of you and a couple of you know Evan as well, I believe. So hello from San Francisco. Hello from San Francisco. <laughs> Um, so we're here to talk a little bit about setting yourself up for success when you host your own virtual happy hours or virtual tastings and kind of things like these and how to really make them engaging and valuable, not only for the people who are joining, but honestly for your brand as well. Yeah. Uh, you want to introduce yourself and give oh, a little background? Um, my name's Evan. Um, I've spent the last almost decade uh, doing kind of luxury wine tours. I'm a certified sommelier and recently took my... Uh, Pomalier certified test. We're waiting. We're on still results. waiting to find out. <laughs> uh, but have really come to love cider, uh, mostly through Suzanne and recognizing the beauty that it contains. That's actually very akin to wine. Has been a fun exploration for me. Yeah, and um, I'm Suzanne. I'm the founder of the Crafty Cask, which is all about celebrating and supporting craft alcohol makers. So not just cider, but also wine and spirits and mead and beer and all that good stuff. Um, and so we have a craft alcohol marketing boot camp where we teach um, craft makers all about marketing. And then we also do consulting and we do a lot of consumer facing content. So videos and, con and articles and all sorts of good stuff to help grow categories and help change their minds and make them want to buy more cider and enjoy more cider. Um, and so we've just recently started doing these virtual online tastings because as the world is changing very rapidly around us, we all have to adapt and pivot and try to look on the positive side and figure out how to kind of keep, keep going on, right? And so we kind of took some of my Meet the Maker events that I typically do in person and brought them online. Um, and then also with Evan's sommelier background and his cider background, he's able to kind of actually do 
like the tasting and teach the tasting techniques and kind of do all of that good stuff to really support craft makers. Um, and so we're not going to talk too much about our events today, but the, the benefit of kind of doing them, it's absolutely beneficial for everyone to be doing their own um, and to engage your own audience. And it's really important. And that's why we're here to help teach you guys do, to do that. But the benefit of doing ones with us or other ones that you might encounter that are similar to ours are that usually if they're set up the right way, you're reaching a much broader audience. So we're promoting it, you're promoting it, the other makers in the event are also promoting it. And so now you're not just talking to your current engaged base and continuing to ask them over and over again to support you, but you're actually reaching a broader audience, making new fans, making new friends, making more sales, hopefully. Um, and so we purposefully set ours up to promote them two weeks in advance so people have time to pre-order, buy online so that they can actually sip along with us um, and then buy while they're you know, on the, on the event and after the event as well. Yeah, we feel like having the uh, product that you're talking about in front of the people that are participating is just that much more immersive and you know engaging for them and beneficial for your brand because they feel like they're there talking with, with you uh, as you're discussing your product. Right. So that's what we're doing. I just put a link for if you want to learn more and get featured and all that good stuff there. But we're not going to stop talking about us, but that's just kind of context and background. Um, and so instead, we're going to kind of talk a little bit about how to use this often new technology or technology that maybe you've been on the receiving end of but haven't really done yourself so you can do it successfully. Um, so I have a few kind of big categories that I'm going to cover. The first one is technology because that's a big one. Um, and so Zoom, which we're all on now, is our preferred kind of platform at the moment. I imagine there's going to be a lots of innovation and lots of new platforms popping up. But right now, Zoom is great. And it's also really good because a lot of people out there already know how to use it. So for your audience, you're not trying to get them to learn a completely new thing. Um, one thing to be aware of, if you're on the free plan, it's great. It can get you what you need, but it does cap meetings at 40 minutes. So everyone will get kicked off after 40 minutes. So that's just kind of important to know. Um, and there's also, of course, added features and benefits for the paid plans, which I believe are around $15 a month. So they're not crazy expensive. The number of people that can be in the meeting is something that you add when you... I think it's 100 it. either way. I think oh. 100 is the maximum for the first tier of paid plan anyways. Um, yeah. And then whatever tool you use, one of the important things is before you get started, go through all the settings. Like make yourself just read through all, because there's a million settings, especially in Zoom. There's record settings, what you allow your users to do, are you allowing them to screen share, all that good stuff. Um, and it's really important to just go through all of that, A, to familiarize yourself with what features there are, and B, to make sure you have it set up right. Because some of those settings, if you don't have them toggled on or off, they can really kind of do some weird things when you're in your, your meeting. Um, so going through the settings and doing that due diligence is important. Um, there's a record setting in Zoom, which is awesome because I want to encourage you guys when you're doing these live events, don't view them as just like a one-time event that like you spend all this time for an hour and then like it disappears into thin air. You can, if you're recording your events, you can record them in speaker view and gallery view, which I strongly recommend. So you can get some of this visual right here recorded. Um, speaker view would just take the view of that one speaker, whatever camera you're using, that's the view that it would record. Um, and you can repurpose all of that. We take our videos afterwards, we edit them, we put some overlays on them with links and things like that. You can use them on social media, you can send them out to your newsletter, you can use them for promotions for future events so people can get a little taste of kind of what it is and decide if they want to join. So it's a good marketing asset, these recordings, to keep using and give you good content to keep using in the future. Um, if you're joining from two devices, so we always join from two devices and we're, we're going to show you our setup in a minute and we'll explain a little bit why that is. Um, it's important to disconnect the audio completely for one. Muting it isn't enough. If you only mute your audio, you're still going to get feedback and weird things going on. So just don't even join audio if you're on multiple um, devices. And also encourage everyone like they did here to use gallery view. So if you're not on there already up at the top, there's a little grid that was like a nine box, I believe. If you click that, then you get everyone's faces or as many faces as it can fit in there instead of just seeing us talking. Um, and so that's kind of fun to be able to do that. Yeah, see, there you go. Um, and then if you're the host, so what they did before is they did spotlight feature. So that basically kind of forces everyone out of gallery view and puts a spotlight on whoever's talking at that moment. The users can then, of course, choose to go back to gallery view whenever they want to. But as the host, it's nice sometimes to be able to kind of, A, switch up the view to keep people's interest, and B, direct everyone to like kind of where you want their attention. 
All right, logistics. Um, so let's show our setup a little sure. bit. And as we show our setup, I'm gonna talk through some of the things of what we do and why we do it. Um, I wanna like candidly say, you can do all of this with no extra equipment, with no extra, like without spending any money at all. But if you really wanna create beautiful, engaging, nice videos, there are some things that if you get them and add them to your kind of repertoire of things you have, they help. Um, I'm gonna put a link in there. I have a whole little Amazon list that has all the things we recommend and the things that you're gonna see here. So you can kind of see all that. And then let's see. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, can I spotlight? Let's see if I can spotlight. spotlight. We'll spotlight your camera. Uh, I know I see it. Do I see it? Oh, I see it. Spotlight. There we go. Okay. So maybe back up and just give the whole kind of view. So this is our living room, right? We're all doing this in our living room. We're like moving furniture around and making the best of it. So um, so we have a table up on top of a table. And honestly, we're just doing that because we like the surface of this table a little bit better, but like those details matter, right? To have a nice wood table instead of kind of a, a black table. So we get creative and try to make things look nice and look good. And I've almost successfully knocked it over at least four times. <laughs> yeah, we have a running joke that we just keep having earthquakes in California. And so don't worry about it. <laughs> um, and so this is our setup. And so, like I said, it's nice to have two co-hosts like we're doing here. We have three co-hosts today, but even if you're in different locations, it's really nice to have multiple co-hosts because as you can see here, so what we have is we have a big screen. And so Evan is hooked up to the big screen so we can kind of keep the gallery view up there at all times. So normally we always keep the gallery up. So even if we're screen sharing, even if we're doing other things, we can kind of keep an eye on people's facial expressions, what they're doing and kind of really feel like we're engaging. We also find that it helps us having a big screen up there with the gallery view on really helps us remember to look there because there's nothing more engaging than if I'm talking to you guys and I'm kind of doing this on chat and I'm like kind of ignoring you. And so that's something to like try to find a way to like trick yourself and we just find having a big screen reminds us to like keep looking there as much as we can. And you'll notice that's also where the camera is. So if we're looking there, we can maybe go in see close us. on the camera here. So they we have a looking. webcam. Um, and that's, again, I suggest that you can absolutely do this with your device built in camera. Absolutely. Um, the nice thing about webcams is you can buy ones that have autofocus. So if you're doing ours actually is not autofocus, we need to upgrade it. But if you're doing things like this, it kind of like, it keeps things from getting blurry and it readjusts. And if there's two of you moving, it's, I'm Italian. I move a lot. You know, it kind of keeps adjusting on you. You might notice we move for glass away. So <laughs> yes. Um, and the other nice thing about having multiple hosts is you can divide and conquer, which again is important because if I'm trying to talk to you and there's all this chat engagement going on, you want to encourage that. You want people to feel like they're being heard and that their answers are, you know, that you're answering them. So if Evan's talking, I can kind of be more on the chat and paying a little bit more attention while still trying to yeah. look up this way. Emily, I was the one that was responding to your question when Suzanne was talking earlier. Right, exactly. Um, the important thing though, just like Jana did for me today is you have to remember to invite them as a co-host when your meeting starts. I forgot to do that for Evan last time and he was like kicking me under the table and I had no <laughs> idea why. Um, the other nice thing is this lets your camera be further away from your face while you can still be chatting here because otherwise your camera has to be really close to you and I don't know about all of you but I don't necessarily need like my face up like that in front of everyone at all Doors on display. Um, and then it also is nice, especially for us because we're doing actual tasting experiences, we need a little bit of a wider view so people can see our glasses, see what we're pouring, and it's not just kind of from here up. So that's another reason why it's nice to do that. Um, and then let's see, um, background. So try to keep your background clean. We actually show them our normal bar down here. So this is what's normally on this behind us is all of this spirits and booze and alcohol just like piled up here. So it sucks. It's annoying. But every time we do one of these, we clear it off and we put the featured cider makers that we're talking about. And this, these are our ciders we have up today. Eden's next. Eden's doing our next one um, in the two weeks. So um, we're excited about that. But um, yeah, so clean, clear, try to make it appealing. Don't have it be super cluttered if you can. I know it's hard. We're at home, but just, you know, try to do that a little bit. Uh, let's see. What else am I forgetting here? Um... Yeah, the lighting. So lighting is tricky, especially with booze because things reflect off of glassware. And you can actually probably see a light reflecting off of my glassware right now, but 
it's the best we can do. So we actually have lights. If you have good lighting in your place, you might not lead this. We do not have good lighting. So I'm gonna put links to these lights. That bigger one that's up there is a little more expensive, of course, um, but I do videos and things of that nature as well. So I already have that. This small one here, do you wanna turn that on for a minute, Evan? So this one is nice. I think it's like 15 bucks, 20 bucks. It has like warm light, uh, warm white lighting. It has different levels and it clips to something and you can also put a phone in it. So it has another clip if you can show that clip next to it. Yeah, so that holds your phone as well. So you can put your phone and the light right there. And so that really helps if you're kind of in a darker room. It really like having decent lighting really brightens things up and really makes everything look better. So it's important, I think, to invest in a little bit of lighting if you have a dark place or you're gonna be doing these at night when there's no natural light. So yeah, you can actually put the phone in there and then have the camera in that hole of the light. So you're not looking right below it or above it. You're looking right in the middle of that. So you're not getting a big white spot in your eye. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'll put a link up to all of those things. What else about our setup? Is that it pretty much? Um, I think those are the salient points. Oh, um, something that we found, uh, you can see Suzanne has her trackball out and I've got my mouse pad out. It's a lot easier than trying to do the delicate motion that you might need yeah. to click on some of the links um, and, you know, spotlight someone or mute someone or something of that nature. To have a mouse. To have yeah. a mouse. And, you know, you don't have to have your arm out making it look like you're reaching for your computer. Right. You just kind of casually do that. Yeah. I think that's it for our setup. Um, then I was just going to quickly do pre-event prep and during the event. Um, so pre-event prep, promote, promote, promote. Like this is marketing, you know, I mean, it's nice to create community and that's really important, of course, but it is like, this is good marketing and this is engaging your audience and you want to unspotlight that we're trying unspotlight to Unspotlight me. Yeah. You have to remember to unspotlight people, which I always forget to do. So that's important to know um, because otherwise it will just stay on that person, even if someone else starts talking. Um, so thank you, Evan, for reminding me to do that. That's also nice why, it, why it's nice to have two co-hosts because you're both and uh, yeah, exactly. Um, so pre-event, so yeah, promote, use your mailing list, social media, all that good stuff. And like I said, that's where it can be beneficial to partner with other people so that you're reaching multiple audiences and you're not just relying on your audience showing up when you want them to. Um, I do suggest requiring registration for events um, and I request that for three, or I suggest that for three reasons. So one, if you require registration, you'll know how many um, people are planning to attend and that's nice for you. So, you know, a should you be promoting more as it's getting closer to the date? Is there are there not enough people coming or B are there so few people coming that you should be really rescheduled because you don't want to waste anyone's time. You don't want to waste your time. You don't want to waste there. So requiring registration is nice for that. It's also nice because you get the email addresses of all attendees. So I just put right on my zoom registration form by registering for this event. You're opting into the crafty cast mailing list. You can unsubscribe at any time. And then they're on my mailing list. And, then, and, I, and I also, I think I say something along the lines of like, so we can keep you up to date about future events, right? So it's like, you were interested in this event. I assume you wanna hear about other events. Now you're on my mailing list. So it's a nice way to grow your mailing list as well. Um, and then the third reason is um, sometimes posting public Zooms, I think in the instance like this, where it's in a safe environment like Palm Boots, you know, it's a little bit easier. But when you're posting events and if you're posting them publicly, there have, especially lately with Zoom getting so big, there have been some instances of kind of trolls just popping in there. And honestly, if you're allowing people to share screens, like I've heard horror stories of people like sharing porn in the middle of your thing and like awful things like that, that like you just don't want to happen. Now you can also turn sharing off so no one can share their screens. So that's another way around it. But you know, there's a lot of people bored at home right now looking for like weird things to do. And so requiring registration also kind of minimizes that because most trolls aren't gonna take the time to register. Um, also pre-event, so preparation is key. We all just wanna be able to like show up and like just have a great time, but it is really important to treat these like a professional event um, and really show up with a plan. Um, a little less critical if you're really just doing a happy hour, like if you're really just trying to get your like fans on board and say open whatever you have at home, let's cheers, let's talk, a little less critical. Um, but if you're really wanting to do something that's engaging and educational and creating some value for them and for your brand, it's important to really prepare. So I suggest um, rough outline of the event, 
visuals to share and bring it to life in a more holistic way. So whenever we feature makers, we get pictures of their orchards, we get pictures of their tasting rooms, pictures of their team, and we screen share that as they're talking. And it really helps consumers feel like they're there and they're getting a, an experience. Um, we've even shared some video kind of on mute, but showing kind of some things going on, the production process, things like that. So gathering all those things together, getting ready with those. Um, creating a document with all the links you might want to share during the event and just having that open on your screen so you can very quickly and easily copy and paste your where to buy links your all those links that you might want to share just having that list ready um, and then there's also if you're on a paid account maybe on the free account I'm not sure if polling but you can you can poll as well I'm not sure if that's on the free account but the poll is really fun so for our events at the beginning of them we always poll people like what's your relationship with cider today are you a cider enthusiast are you not sure do you really not like cider and then at the end of the event we pull them again like how do you feel now do you like it more do you like it less and it's really fun to see people's kind of transformation yeah uh, something else that I wanted to chime in with uh, someone when when you see a question come up in the chat bar um, if it's a question that's directed towards, you know, uh, the audience as a whole, but it's something that's pertinent to talk about, instead of just responding in the chat bar, um, perhaps invite the person that posed the question to ask their question again, in case somebody missed it, they weren't reading the chat bar, and let them get on camera and ask their question, giving them the opportunity to kind of more have a dialogue, because that's something that's really helpful in creating uh, the immersive component of this that's obviously what we're all striving for. Um, so encouraging them, you know, of course, some people don't feel comfortable being on camera and having their camera turned on at all. Uh, it might be more than they feel comfortable with, but give them the opportunity uh, if they do pose a question to just say, hey, um, I saw you had a question there, you know, would you like uh, to, to, ask it. to ask it? Yeah, um, and also engaging the audience too so you know we're, we're always talking about how can we get everyone to do the same thing like so everyone swirl your glass and then hold it up let's see the color of it right like and then getting everyone to do stuff together makes it feel a little more engaging than just talking yeah thank you yes um and then last for pre um so do a trial run especially your first time you don't have to do a trial run of all the content but like just get in there and open one device as the host and open another device as the participant so you can see the differences and you can talk to them clearly about what they're seeing and really just play around with all the features that's really important to do um screen sharing in particular can be really tricky at first like different documents share differently you might end up showing people your entire screen before you get to the document um, so practicing with screen sharing i honestly practice with screen sharing every single time i just make sure i can find the documents i know where they are they're opening right they look good on screen so that's really important to kind of always practice i think um and then also before starting your event i, st I don't know if you're anything like me but i always have eight million tabs and four windows open at all times and so i highly suggest just restarting your computer before you start a zoom because like just clean out all the junk get everything closed and then just open only the things you need all right, last thing is during the event. Um, so just like they did today, give people five minutes to join and settle in, but ask them a question or ask them to chat or give them something to do during those five minutes. Um, so like we were talking about where we're from and how we're doing, and you can do it just like we did today, especially if it's a smaller group, you can just unmute everyone as they join um, and you can just let them talk and that's totally fine. Um, or you can, what a lot of times we do with our bigger groups is we'll say, you know, tag where you're coming from and tell us what you're sipping on, you know, and then we'll start to comment on, ooh, what's that you're drinking? And then we'll unmute them and they can talk to us about it. So, um, but give them something to do while they're waiting to get started to like keep it engaging from the start. Yeah, and that's a great opportunity. Uh, you know, if you'll all take your, whatever you're drinking. Oh wait, we're drinking something else. But that's a fun one. Yeah, to have everyone do this as they join, right? And it's Hold that up there. If you guys do that with me right now. Yeah, do everyone do that with us right now if you have a bottle room. or a glass. Look how cool it is to see everybody's faces and what they're drinking right there on the screen. And so that's a really fun screenshot. So again, if you record in gallery view, now you can take that and turn that into a fun social media post, right? To be like, we just had this thing and look at all the ciders. And, and then you can tag all those other cider makers or whatever if people are drinking. And hopefully that goes even further. So it's, it's fun to kind of really engage people. Um, when you get started, of course, introduce the event. Um, give a high level overview of the plan. We sometimes forget to do this and we like definitely always get feedback that people want to know 
what's the agenda? Like, what are we doing? And roughly how long is this going to go on? So I got to start cooking dinner in 20 minutes. Is this thing going to be done in an hour or right. 15 minutes? Exactly. So give people, you know, respect their time and give people a little bit of a sense of what's going on. Um, don't forget to introduce yourself. I think sometimes, especially if like, you know, a lot of your members, you know, a lot of your fans, it's really easy to just be like, I know everyone and just go. Um, treat every event like there's at least one person on there that you don't know. Because more often than not, there's at least one person on there that doesn't know you very well. Um, and they might feel a little left out if you just kind of keep going like you're all best friends and they don't feel that they're as close with you. So it's important, and especially when you get to bigger groups. So right here, if you're in gallery view right now, you'll notice there's arrows on the side to go to the second page. And so it's really easy to forget about who's on that second page. Um, and so it's important to just act like you don't know everyone and introduce yourself. Um, and then always make sure to go over your house rules and helpful tech tips. I'm going to upload a file that you guys can just download and rip and reapply and edit yourself. So we have our standing house rules and our standing helpful tech tips. And it is important to give people those tech tips because there are going to be people on your call, just like there are today, that this is their first time using Zoom, they haven't used it in a while, they're not super comfortable. And the more comfortable you can get people to get, the more they're going to engage. So giving them some quick tech tips and then also figuring out what your house rules are is is important to like set the ground the ground the stage set the stage um and really kind of and so we'll share those with you so you guys can just rip and reapply and use them as you see fit and then i think it's just once you're into the main content keep an eye on time keep an eye on the chat the raised hands feature is awesome we highly recommend encouraging people to use the raised hands feature because the chat can get moving fast sometimes and so Evan just raised his hand now. Um, and so I don't know if other people can see it. Can everyone see that Evan raised his hand? No, so just the host. So it's uh, not- No, I think they can see it there. If you look in the participants, oh. your participants might not be there. If you uh, have the chat box up and then click participants- um, At the bottom. The participants will show up there. You can see- Oh yeah, see so you're all needed. raising your hand. There you go. Exactly. Hi, guys. And so that is like, we always really encourage, yes, chat, but we'd rather you raise your hand because then we can call on you and unmute you and you can engage yourself. And so we always kind of encourage people to do that more and it's a different color and it catches your attention easier and things like that. Um, Susanna, yeah. you had a question. Shall we unmute you and- uh, Yeah, let's. Yeah, cause I, actually, I can't get it. Oh, you, can, you can't unmute. I'm not a co-host. Sorry. Susanna, I unmuted you. Do you have a question? Yes, I do. I've actually got two, if that's all right. Um, First is you mentioned that you use that it's nice to show images perhaps of you know the cidery or the people yeah. or stuff like that or even animals as in uh, cider cats as cap has so you do you use screen share actually while you're talking then oh yeah wow. absolutely so at the bottom of the screen there's a, just a button that says share screen and then I go grab whatever document it is or I have a, fo a folder with all the photos that I want to show in it and you can just scroll through it um, yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. And then the other thing was you mentioned recording, which sounds amazing, but I was just wondering, do the files end up super huge and you just keep them a little while or how so, does it? Um, so yeah, so Zoom has an option where you can record to the cloud or you can record to your local computer. Honestly, though, the cloud runs out of space really fast. When we have one 90 minute video in there, they email me telling me I'm out of space. So um, you would probably want to have a Dropbox or something that has some, oh no, we're going to have to open more, wah wah. Um, yeah, so you would probably want to get like a Dropbox folder or something that's in the cloud where you can store this. Or they have these really great little external hard drives that are pretty affordable and hold a, t I have a ton of videos on those. So um, yeah, you, you do need some storage if you're going to do that. Great. Thank you very much. Here, I'm just gonna um, show you real quick what screen share looks like. So I'm gonna do, we just did a, an event um, last week with Ethic Cider and Ragged Hill. And so this was their kind of, um, you know, and so this is what it looks like. And so you can still see the speaker kind of on the screen in a little bubble, but you get to kind of be looking through what they're doing. And so this can be really engaging to do this. And, you know, honestly, when, when we do this, we tell our makers, you guys talk and talk about whatever you want to talk about. We're going to do the visuals while you're talking. Don't feel the need 
to talk about every picture because it's not about that necessarily and that can get a little boring for people sometimes so it's more about like we're just giving you a visual kind of 360 experience while they're talking about whatever they want to talk about cool i think that was it for the stuff we were going to share directly so we can um caitlin if you guys are ready to yeah, I actually wanted you guys to share a couple of the successes that you had on your tasting last week and kind of what the results were of that, what kind of the, some of the responses you received and what happened. Yeah, it was great. It was, you know, it was actually, that was our first um, one that we really promoted and did. We've done a few other kind of smaller ones in the past, but so um, we had, gosh, 40 people sign up. I'm not sure. Yeah, something like that. And then maybe 25 showed up. Yep. And then out of that, so one of our success metrics that we're keeping an eye on is we, um, and this is a good idea actually to share with you guys oh, yeah. too. So we're always sharing um, the order links for the different makers that were because we're encouraging people to buy and support them and, you know, the ciders we're talking about. So we create Bitly links for that. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason we create Bitly links is because they're trackable. And so I can go into my Bitly account at any time and see how many people clicked on it. And so I can basically now say out of those 25 people who came, 18 people or there were 18 clicks on the different makers and that was the number so we were around a 60 percent kind of click rate to go actually to the order pages and then we know for sure this is the hard part because it relies on you know we don't have the right tracking data in place yet but we know for sure that four people actually bought stuff so um that's like a is you're, that, the, you're the math guy i don't know a little less than a quarter 20 <laughs> percent um yeah so, so yeah, so we feel pretty good about that for our first event that we got people to buy and, and honestly these, the first couple we're doing, we're not promoting early enough to get them to pre-buy. Um, whereas now we just sent out a newsletter yesterday telling them what our next three are and really like giving them links to go buy Eden Cider, to go buy Botanist and Barrel Cider, to go, you know, and telling them exactly what we're drinking and all of that. So we're hoping that the sales increase from it. Uh, something Great. else that obviously you can do a lot more easily than we can is if you are willing to offer, you know, a discount on your product, you yeah. can create a coupon code and then you can see exactly how many people bought because of their because attendance, of because that's where you gave them the code to buy. Yeah. And we've had people doing like discounted shipping or free shipping if they don't want to do a discount and that's still really valuable and shipping is expensive. Um, so yeah. Great. Uh, I know it looks like Michelle has a question. Let's see if I can unmute her. There she goes. Um, this is so great. Thank you, Palm Boots. Thank you, Suzanne and Evan. Yeah. Um, Ethan. Um, You're right. Um, You're right. right. You had it right for the first time. time. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is is more of just a comment about? I know a lot of the makers are using Vino Shipper, and I'm doing a virtual happy hour tomorrow where the cider makers put together a special discounted bundle on vino shipper so they actually got me to buy multiple bottles for their happy hour and it was really easy it was just labeled happy hour bundle oh, and that's just, awesome and, and, and yeah so yeah because that is one of the things we would love to do because yesterday we were when we were writing the newsletter we were like all right buy eden ciders make sure to buy this one make sure to buy that one like and we were like eh, that gets complicated so that would be great if there's a way for people who are on vino shipper at least to create these little crafty cast happy hour packages yeah. Jana had a question too about lead time. Um, just because it's being a little difficult with shipping, everyone's buying everything online and having shipped. What kind of lead time? I mean, you guys are not shipping experts, I, I know, but is it a two week lead time? Is it, what are you trying to do? We're trying to do at least two weeks. Yeah. I think ideally we'd like to get out three weeks, but it's, you know, it's a little challenging right now because we're trying to get as many of these on the books and as many of these happening as quickly as possible for makers because they right. need the support now but we know that they'll get better support if we wait two or three weeks to do them. So we're, we're kind of trying to, yeah, but two weeks minimum is what yeah, we're doing I think, right now. You know, it, at least domestically being able to get product to and from uh, is, you know, plausible in a week. And so then you've got a week of them kind of deciding how many of which and you yeah. know, if they want to get all of them and then still there's an opportunity for them to sign up and buy and get the product before the actual event. But yeah, our lobby today was completely Boxes full of ours. <laughs> um, Eden, wanna... shipped, Eden shipped me their cider late last week and I got it today. What was that? And so that's all the way in Vermont to California, so. What was that, Jenna? I went ahead and unmuted myself. Um, I just thought I would, if you don't mind. <laughs> no, please. Um, so I think there's like, I have kind of, I guess my question is a little bit, um, 
layered. Like first off, you know, we're looking at it from the promotion aspect, right? Like how much time do we need to let people know our, you know, consumer public who were like, please buy this cider and join us and drink cider with us. Um, and then, you know, of course, we're kind of operating on the shipping logistics and something that, you know, I think is really changing really fast. And I'd love to get your take on it. And that's kind of where I'm like, oh, the dynamic time, like, it's great. Sorry, I'm in the dark. It's just a lot of back glare. My lighting is coming at the end of the week here. <laughs> um, anyway, like to be responsive and dynamic, something what we've been talking a lot about is like, if I want to support a brand that I love, a cidery that I love, and I can't get access to their product right now. Um, I want to help pitch their story and their, you know, and get involved in like the pictures you were showing with Epic, you know, like I could get down on being excited about that. Like I'd love to drink the cider with you, but I'm really feeling like there's a lot of value in sharing their story and their humanity. Okay. And if I can't drink what you're drinking, like, you know, in the past, if this was like, you know, a month ago, I'd be like, let's do the flight and you taste everything through. And I want people to buy that cider 100%. But at the same time, if they can't get their hands on it, but then, you know, they buy it after the fact, or it just is the long range, you know, pres preservation of a brand that we love. Like I just am also feeling like, you know, if you can't get like, I guess part of my, cause I'm, planning to do this too. <laughs> and we're working on it is, you know, it's like, how can we say, you know, Hey, even if you can't drink that with us, like a lot of what we're doing is getting to know the makers and like connect with them as humans. And if you don't have that in your glass, it's still going to have value. Do you feel like that's something that is a relative pivot in the timing? Do you want to talk on that? 100% agree. I would say, I, I think one of the reasons, honestly, we're so focused on sales is because that's the only thing that's making makers want to participate right now. I would love to do these if they didn't hold it to such a high success metric of, because I agree and like, but I think it's hard, especially right now when people are struggling for money. I think it's hard for people to value brand building, brand awareness, the fact that down the road when this person sees this in a store or get is in that city, that now they're going to come visit you. I think they're having, people are having a hard time valuing that right now, um, but we don't require that people are drinking the same things we are on the thing. We, we think they'll have a better experience if they are, um, but we're, we're not requiring that right now for that very reason. We're telling them to crack open whatever cider they have, tell us about that, um, you know, things like that. Yeah, to your point, Jen, I think it speaks volumes that um, in our, you know, our recent tasting last Thursday, people were drinking cider, but nobody was drinking the no specific ciders that we were drinking. Because we didn't give them enough lead time. But they were engaged enough with the makers that were on the uh, tasting with us and hearing us talk about the ciders that they went out and bought them. Yeah. Yeah. The post, the post buy is just as important and the, they're going to come visit you in the future. They're going to tell their friends about you. Like that's all super valuable. It's just hard for us to quantify and like really make it feel valuable for people. For sure. For sure. Thanks for addressing that. It, yeah. It's obviously a day by day yeah. world we're living in. But honestly, we're hoping that like these become enough of, I'm hoping, you know, cause we're all focused on so much negativity right now. I keep trying to be like, what good is going to come out of this? What new behaviors in our society and culture are going to come out of this? And I'm really hoping that connecting virtually moves beyond scrolling each other's Facebook pages and feeling like we know what each other are up to and that's enough to more of this in the future, like ongoing. And so we are hoping that like, during this crisis, we can get enough people excited about this and feeling good about this that we keep doing them far after this is all over because it's like, what a great benefit for all of you where people can only visit you maybe once a year when they happen to be on vacation near you, but now they can virtually visit you three or four times a year. You know, it's just a really beneficial platform, I think, to keep your audience engaged and find new members. Awesome. Um, real quick uh, point of order with regard to Jana, unmuting yourself, bravo. <laughs> um, and I think the main reason that we suggest muting everyone kind of as they enter is to diminish background noise, that's all. Because if your dog's barking or you know, yeah. the TV's on in the other room, the <laughs> that, that kind of stuff makes it so that the rest of the audience can't hear the person that's speaking. So if you wanna say something, that's a great way to, again, encourage participation is just tell people, just unmute yourself and raise your hand and say, I have a question. Yeah. Instead well, of, you don't even have to do the raise your hand thing on there. Now, when the, when the group, if you have 40 people, it's probably best to continue to encourage that. But when it's a, you know, a group of people around this size, I think it's completely viable to just tell people, unmute yourself and say what you have to say. 
Well, that's a perfect segue because I want everyone to unmute themselves. And first, uh, Suzanne and Evan, thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure you're watching the comments as they roll in, but this has been extremely helpful just to have people give people a little more confidence and know how to kind of start. So I'd love for people to kind of jump in and ask questions as they come along. I know, Elle, you've shared some of your thoughts and things that you've experienced over the past couple of days. We would just love to hear from everyone. Um, I'd encourage you also to put it in the grid view, uh, which they already talked about. So in your upper right hand corner, you can see the grid and then you can see everyone talking. So. Al, I'm just going to call on you. I hope you don't mind, but have sure. you share some of the successes that you've seen in the past couple of weeks? Yeah. So obviously packaged product is lower margin than draft is. So we're by no means killing it, <laughs> but uh, we're managing to uh, start a delivery service around Richmond. We do it in like, you know, if someone's, if someone's two miles away, here's the minimum for free shipping. Otherwise it's a dollar a mile. If you're four miles away, up to 15 miles away. And so we're finding a lot of people in the suburbs that are just like, you guys should have done this years ago. And so they're like, one, one woman, she saw you know, some, some article about delivery or something uh, in Richmond and she was like, what's Busky? What is, no, never heard of craft beer. I have no idea what breweries are. Richmond has, they have breweries? And she's like, cool, okay, uh, I'll check it out. <laughs> like this is the craziest delivery ever so you just end up meeting people who are eventually gonna come back to the tasting room and then later down the road they'll spend money on draft but right now you can keep yourself afloat with package and really push your brand out there that's awesome thanks for sharing mm -hmm. anyone else had a week that they or some successes this week that they want to share or things they've tried that maybe didn't work and they had to shift a little bit um, I can definitely share a few things on that. Um, so I don't know, I know most of you, um, but I manage Chilling Cider House Portland. We are in a very unique position in that um, our cidery is not in the same state that I'm in. So um, that causes a lot of problems. And uh, the workarounds have been, um, you know, they've, they've taken a lot of thought to get them there. Uh, right now we're doing a walk-up window um, we do specialize in gluten-free food, so we're doing a walk-up window for that. Uh, working with our distributors, actually, to keep on good terms with them. Sadly, we can't do delivery at this point um, because I don't have a commercial license, uh, which I know there's other people in Portland doing that who are probably going to not be happy when things come back around. Um, but it's really about how to, how to engage with the customers that we already had. And um, we're actually in an area where they're we're surrounded by condos. So um, we have teamed up with the local um, coffee shop and uh, we have a Russian restaurant called Kachka and we do free delivery to all, I think it's 700 apartments, um, but they have to pre-order. So it's the, doing these constant workarounds and um, you know, understanding what your business is and how you can make that work the best. Uh, got a few other projects coming down the path as well. Um, a lot of them are actually going to be using Zoom, so thank you. This was super helpful. Great. Can't wait to um, really launch some of those things. And, you know, I think right now a lot of it is about um, how creative can you be and um, while still having fun with it. You know, don't, don't be afraid to, to mess up. Um, right now, those mess ups could be the thing that makes it for you. Or it could be something small and be able to kind of bounce and rally on those things. And while taking your brand seriously, also kind of being able to laugh at your own mistakes as well as seeing, learning from other people, being open, doing more things like this where it's awesome to see how open everybody is in sharing and learning. <laughs> and I love all the cats in the pictures. Really happy. <laughs> oh man, and I do want to note real quick, thank you. Thank you, Jenny, that's awesome. And it's good to hear that you you tried some stuff, you're pivoting and just trying to make it work. That's what it's about right now. Um, and just a note, and yeah, I'll grab one second, just a note um, on the right-hand side, um, Jana is being so kind and entering in a bunch of stuff uh, from the Crafty Cask and uh, Suzanne is entering in things as well. And so make sure you check the notes section. Uh, we will download that and make sure some of those links are available afterwards along with the recording. So you can share it out with other people that weren't here today. But yeah, go ahead, share some more stuff. Yeah, um, I noticed today our, one of our local breweries 
has put up a thing on Facebook that they've made um, a sort of pact on, del they're doing deliveries, so they're also delivering from local um, food producers, eggs, milk, uh, bread from um, artisan um, and small uh, producers in, in their local area. So that's also quite a good thing to do, you know, as a, as a local thing. So obviously yeah. it's not going to be a big national thing, but um, for them, I, I think that will really help them to sell their, their beer because they're a very small local brewery. Great. Yeah, I think that's amazing. I think we, on one of the other calls I was on, it might have been the Northwest Cider Association call, um, other cideries in the Northwest were pairing up with breweries or like offering, hey, if you buy these bottles of cider, you also get some of this cheese from a local artesian. So finding those ways to kind of like pair up your cider with something else that is kind of helping just value add a little bit. I think that's great. Hannah, I know you had a, a comment. Oh, yeah, no, we, we're similar. We, we haven't we just taken on a pub three weeks before we were forced to close by coronavirus. So we invested every single penny in the pub, which I'm now sitting in and which is empty. So we're in more of the financial crisis of how do we pay the rent and the bills and everything else with no income. So that is a huge over consuming thing. But we are a cider company as well. And um, we're, we're looking to see how we can possibly do distance sales. We haven't had a chance to do it before because we didn't have a premises license, which we need, but now we have the pub, we have the license, so we can look at distance selling. And uh, it's just been really interesting tonight hearing how to promote um, tastings and getting people engaged online in sort of building up your market. I, I just want to say thank you very much um, for tonight. It's been really, really interesting. Yeah, well, that was it really. Thank you for joining. Yeah, thank you for all you guys for joining because I feel like gosh we're all like technically so stressed right now and like so scrambling and like to take time to connect and learn and like just try to you know it's not easy to do you know when we all like want to just keep go 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 problem solve problems all problems like so kudos to all of you guys and like kudos to you guys for all these creative solutions that i'm hearing because that is not you know it's not easy oh we, we're feeling left out we have two cats and neither one of them are showing up <laughs> this is our chubby, chubby cat oh, so cute wait till you see her belly oh, oh my gosh oh, <laughs> Elle, I, Elle, I see your hand raised there yeah so um if anyone's having trouble getting their um their items up online for delivery or pre-order or anything like that um my brother-in-law put our shopify together so if you want to check out the Busky website, if anyone knows of anyone who's having trouble getting things up, he did it overnight, maybe in a day and a half, something like that. So quick Great. turnaround if anybody needs help. So um, because I had to do everything 100% for free, um, we actually use a Google form. Google form is 100% free. You can uh, track their email. You can, yeah. they can yeah. order from the Google form by putting their name, their phone number, you list everything that's available. Um, you get an email as soon as they they tell you what they like. You call them. You take their payment over the phone. So that's the workaround for being 100% free yeah. and 100% no contact. So yeah, that's I've heard. Yeah, I've heard that Redfield Cider in Oakland. Uh, they had to completely close down because they were doing like in person. But people can just email them, and they're putting together orders and things. And but. It, and it's just working they'll go and they'll do you know hey pick it up at this time but i'll thank you also for the offer it's um i know a lot of businesses have struggled i know some wine shops in my neighborhood have you know not tax savvy people and i've had a really hard time getting those online stores up and running so thank you and if you if you want to enter in your contact information into the chat that'd be super helpful thank you and i'll just i'll just reiterate um that, that we're gonna talk on friday on um how on selling techniques right now um, with the Northwest Cider Association. That's open to everyone. That's another free webinar. So um, we're going to have a few different cideries who are doing a few different elements, whether it's, you know, curbside pickup to go direct delivery online. So um, that resource is also in the Palm Boots group. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, we hope to do another one of these next week. We're just kind of trying to figure out the schedule right now. Um, thank you again to Suzanne and Evan uh, and Crafty, the Crafty Cask. Um, we can't thank you guys enough for providing some 
tips and tricks uh, during this kind of challenging and interesting time. Um, thank you to all of you that joined. Thanks to the ladies from the UK that are here. It is midnight your time and I, we really appreciate you staying up and being with us. Um, if you know, as I mentioned, uh, we're doing some Instagram uh, interviews, uh, Instagram live interviews over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're figuring out how to download those and upload them to the Facebook group as well. But if there are any topics you want to cover or have us cover, is there's anybody doing something great that you think would make a great 15 minute interview, um, just let us know. We, we would love to just share that knowledge and have some fun and, you know, do it over a drink with everyone. So thank you. And I'm going to do the thing that Suzanne and Evan said where we all raise our glass so I can take a oh, picture. Oh, glass. <laughs> yeah. If you don't mind. <laughs> Uh, let me see if I can figure this out. It's all gone. <laughs> okay, everyone, ready? One, two, three. Perfect. Love it. All right. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, for Thanks, Thanks for being a part of the Boots Society. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank bye, you. Guys. Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thanks, Suzanne. Thank you for being here. Of course. Yeah, guys. Thank <laughs> you.